Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video I wanted to show you guys how you can browse the modern web in 2018 on a PowerPC based Mac computer. So a G3, a G4, or a G5 based system. Um, as most of you guys probably know if you use one of these systems or if you have used one in the past, um, it can be very difficult to find updated software for them. And that's really just because that these machines are, you know, pretty old. Uh, these processors have not been used. I mean, really the whole PowerPC architecture has pretty much not been used by the consumer computer industry since Apple stopped using them in, that was like the late, mid to late 2000s. So um, because of that, there's just a lot of people, you know, the majority of software developers are not making their software for these old systems because there's really uh, not a lot of people using them. There's a very niche market for these systems, and it's pretty much been turned over to um, individual people and individual groups of people that want to go ahead and you know devote their free time to projects like Ten Four Fox here, and that's basically what this um, uh, what this program is right here. Ten Four Fox is a browser that is based on the modern Mozilla Firefox platform. So this is actually based on a modern version of Mozilla Firefox. So what's cool about that is, is not only is this browser still updated to this day by this group of people, but it, you're also getting all of the latest uh, you know, security patches um, from Mozilla that you wouldn't get if you're using like you know an old version of Apple Safari or an old version of Mozilla Firefox that would still run on this computer. And you're gonna have to use a pretty old version. I mean, the version of uh, Safari on here hasn't been updated since like 2009 uh, or 2011. Uh, this is Safari 5, I believe. So it's a you know pretty old version, and it's filled with a lot of security holes, and that's definitely a major problem for um, people wanting to get web browsers for these old systems. So um, I'm gonna have the link down below for 10 for Fox. You can actually find it at floodgap.com. Um, I'll have that link, as I said, down in the video description, as well as all of the other links to the software that I mentioned in this video. So the whole website here is kind of inspired by uh, Apple's um, High Sierra website. So for like the Mac OS High Sierra operating system, uh, it kind of looks very similar. Um, I'll kind of throw like a little screenshot of that up here so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. But they have kind of uh, designed this site to... Um, I guess be very welcoming to like a Mac user because it kind of does look like that, um, like Apple's website, you know, which is pretty awesome. Um, and they say right down here flat out that, yeah, we do support the G3, G4, and G5 uh, processors. And it, this is a totally free uh, piece of software. This is, you know, as I said, still developed to this day. Um, the last update was version 6.1. And yeah, so this is where you go ahead and actually download it um, right here. I didn't really mention this, but I am currently using the latest version of this browser right now. So that's uh, 10 for Fox 6.1 right here, uh, feature paired to release 6.1. Um, and they do have four different versions of the browser. They've got one for G3 processors. They have two different versions for G4 processors and one for G5 processors. So um, I'm using an iBook G4 right here. Uh, so I'll go ahead and show you the specifications of this. Um, this is running a 1.33 gigahertz PowerPC G4 with one and a quarter gigs of RAM. Uh, this is macOS 10.5.8 Leopard. Um, and basically to figure out which of these two different G4 versions, so if you're using like an iBook G4 or a PowerBook G4 or any of the G4 based systems, there's two different versions here. And to figure out which one that you want to use, you actually have to open up Terminal. And what you want to do is type in the word machine. And when you do that, you will see right here, uh, this string comes out and it says PPC 7450. Mine says 7450 because this is a newer iBook. Um, if you're using one of the older G4s, yours will most likely say 7400. So they have two different versions compiled for these two different uh, versions of the PowerPC G4. So for me, I uh, am currently using the 7450 one, which is the G4e. Um, but if you're on a G3 or a G5, you don't have to worry about that. You just actually click on uh, the G3 or the G5 respectively. So that is the, um, you know, like the whole website right here. One thing that I also want to mention is this is not by any means going to make the browsing experience on this something like on a modern computer. It's just not going to happen because um, of the fact that, that this hardware is just so old and this architecture is not really supported anymore. Um, it does do a fairly decent job at browsing websites. I mean, you can still definitely browse the web on this, but 
you're, you're definitely going to notice that some sites are going to be a lot slower than they would be on a modern system. Some sites uh, are going to be really unusable, but for the most part, I would say uh, a good majority of the sites are uh, at least somewhat usable. So we're going to go ahead and start it off with um, my form site, because my form site, osforms.net, is a very simple example of this. So I'm going to go ahead and just load that up here. And this site, uh, keep in mind, this is a very basic form site. It's all text-based. Um, there are some images, but that's really only in the post. But if I go ahead and, and try to scroll, you can see that it does scroll and it you know, somewhat keeps up, but it is still a little bit jagged, as you can see. And But I can still use the site perfectly fine, so I can go into like uh, form rules here. It'll load that page right up. Um, I can go into my post about the rules and you see that everything you know displays correctly there's no like errors or there's like no um, scripts that aren't being able uh, to run um, be, you know because of the fact that this is based on a modern version of Firefox uh, for the most part all of like the website elements and that sort of thing are going to load correctly so you can see here that even like the ads here at the bottom load um, so yeah this site is a decent example of uh, what you're going to expect on the majority of, of like text-based websites out there. Um, the scrolling is the main thing. It can be a little bit jagged, but it is still definitely usable. I mean, you can use this website. I could use this because um, it's not uh, like being super slow and like super unusable. Um, another good example is Reddit. So I'm going to log on to Reddit here. We'll go to, to our YouTube. And this is another decent example because Reddit is, um, there definitely are some more images and um, more visual elements on Reddit than there are on like my form site, for example, but um, it still loads up here. You can see that, you know, the whole page loads up in its entirety. You can see all of, you know, like the images, the ads, um, the search functionality over here. Scrolling again is going to be a little bit jagged. Um, but it's definitely still usable and twitter again it's it's kind of the same story here with like the jagged scrolling and everything um this is actually a little bit smoother than it was on my form site um but and even if i want to like uh, click on this image here to load up to load it up in full screen it will do that it will show the tweet down here with all of the text so everything loads correctly so my next example is going to be youtube and that is where you're going to see um it basically take a toll on this processor because a lot of stuff is going to be really really slow you know for the most part pretty okay all of like the images and the text and everything loads but the videos is where it starts to pretty much take a toll on the cpu um, these are again html5 videos so it's not like it's flash or anything flash by the way it isn't even really supported um, by 104 fox they don't support it officially but the video will play it will just be very very laggy um you can see i'm even having trouble like mousing over like the volume thing it takes a while for that to pop out mousing over like the settings and when i click on that it takes a while for it to come up it it will not even let you go past 360p um you, that's your only choice i don't think you can even you you know you can't even go below 360p so if it suffers this bad with 360p you're you know going to imagine that if you try to do 720 or 1080 it's going to be even worse um it still plays the video I go ahead and make it full screen here. And you can't really hear it, but the audio comes out um, you know, perfectly fine. There's like no stuttering in the audio. Uh, it works for the most part perfectly fine. Go ahead and turn the volume up here to show you. So I don't know if you can hear it, but the audio is playing perfectly fine. Now the video, you can clearly see that it's having a lot of trouble playing it back. Uh, it's really laggy. It's not keeping a consistent FPS. It's um, freezing and it's just not watchable. I have had to actually, before that I started recording this many times, I would be doing something on YouTube and the website would lock up and I would have to force quit 104 Fox. It wouldn't even, um, you know, like rebound from what it was doing. So YouTube is definitely um, not a really good example. I mean, for the most part, like the website without the video, um, you know, again, it's like the same scrolling issue, but you can still see all of this content. It still displays it correctly. But when you try to play video, that's when we start to get into a lot of issues. Now, there is a decent workaround for that, and I'm going to be showing you that in this video as well. If you go into the preferences here uh, in 104 Fox, so you go to this little menu up here and go to preferences, and you go to the 104 Fox tab right here. 
Um, one of the features they have built in, which is pretty nice, is uh, a user agent string changer. You can actually change the user agent of the browser so that other websites will basically see it as a different browser. And one thing you can do to get a bit of a better YouTube quality playback is change this. Um, from 10.4fox over to Classilla. Now, uh, Classilla is uh, another project worked on by the same group of people, but uh, instead of for PowerPC-based Macs, it's for um, OS 9, which I guess is still pretty much PowerPC-based Macs, but uh, it is basically designed for OS 8 and OS 9. And what it does is it um, pretty much um, fakes itself as being a mobile browser. So it fakes the websites into thinking that you're like on a phone or on a tablet, and it forces it to display the mobile version of the website because that just works better on OS 8 and OS 9. Because mobile websites have a lot um, less content on them, essentially, it's a, a very uh, stripped down website for like a mobile platform. It just will display better on those older operating systems. And it's honestly kind of the same story for um, these PowerPC based Macs running early versions of OS 10. Um, so if I go ahead and change this to Classilla and I go back to my YouTube channel and reload this page, it will automatically go into uh, m.youtube.com. And what you'll notice here is that, I mean, yeah, this is like the same interface you would get if you go to YouTube on a tablet, but already the site is gonna be a lot more responsive. Scrolling, for example, I can go ahead and scroll and you can see that it's a little bit smoother. It actually can keep up and it's a lot smoother than what it was before. And playing video, what's cool about this is the videos will actually not play in the browser. They will actually ask you to open up another application. So if I go ahead and click on this video thumbnail right here, which is you know really blown up by the way, it will load me into the mobile YouTube player and I can click on play. And what happens here is it will go ahead and come up with this launch application dialog and it will ask me to launch either QuickTime Player or, or uh, I have specified VLC. Um, QuickTime player for me does not work at all. Uh, it just fails to play the video stream. But if you go to VLC and, and you download um, an older version of VLC for PowerPC based Macs, you can actually play YouTube videos. It's, it's going to be, and I'm, I'm going to you know, give you a fair warning here, it's going to be in really low quality, um, probably even below 360p. But it is, it will actually keep up and it will not really lag, you know, for the most part at all. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, click on VLC here, and I'll uh, also have the download link for VLC in the video description, and I'm going to click on OK. And what will happen here is it's going to open VLC, it's going to have a uh, video.3gp file, and if I click on the play button right down here, it will go ahead and start to play the video. And I can go ahead and make this full screen, and you can see how low quality that this is, but watch the video playback. So you can see how it's a lot smoother. Um, it's super, you know, super low quality. It's nothing crisp by any means, but um, some people would probably you know, prefer to watch it this way when it's not lagging at all. Um, the audio is still coming in fine. It's a very degraded quality, but you can still watch this. It's not lagging at all, which is pretty awesome. So, I mean, I can go ahead and, you know, uh, skim to any point in the video, um, just like you would do on the, you know, like the mobile YouTube player. So that is a bit of a workaround to getting YouTube to work um, somewhat on one of these PowerPC based Macs. I mean, you can see like uh, right there, there were a few frames of uh, stuttering, but uh, for the most part, it is pretty smooth. And that's mainly because it's in such a low quality. This is probably like 240p, maybe even below that. So it is uh, definitely usable. Honestly, as I said, some people would probably prefer to use this rather than watching that laggy YouTube playback which might be in a little bit of uh, better picture quality, but the video is really laggy. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of uh, VLC. And it, uh, as long as you have this uh, user agent string changed to Classilla, all of the websites that you load up are going to be in mobile. If I go to Google.com here and let that load up, it's going to load the mobile version of Google, as you can see. And I can go ahead and type in like Michael MJD, hit enter, and it loads up the mobile, uh, you know, Google search page which um, is more optimized for mobile browsers. So there's a lot less content um, on this page, but you can still definitely use it. And again, with that scrolling, it's much smoother. That is pretty much it. That is how to browse the web. Honestly, one of the 
best web browsing experiences that you're going to get on a power pc based mac in 2018 that is pretty much going to wrap it up for this video i hope that you guys enjoyed it if this helped you out definitely sure to give it a thumbs up um be sure to let me know down in the comments if you guys you know use one of these older macs and what uh, solutions that you have found um for you know browsing the web maybe you have something better than i've shown here be sure to let me know i can definitely um take your guys's uh, suggestions and make them into a future video that would be pretty awesome um so guys just once again i just want to thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video